you say the whole thing come over. You know, like uh, if you get drunk and then even in the morning when you wake up, you still sense the uh, drowsiness. Well, I'm a good boy. I've never been, uh, you know, we grew in the church, praise God for that. So I've never really tried to be drunk. No, I've tried a little before, so, but I've never really, you know, experienced that. But anyway, uh, in the same way, the, the teaching of the Old Testament, the priest, you know, when every, every body should go to the priest, there is a half or bell, they call it. Because now, as royal priests, what do we do? Who do we place? Uh, or who, is, who do we put back into the place of the priest when we are believers? Pastor! That's the very good, the most convenient. So anything, we call the pastor. This prayer, this the gospel, this discipleship, this Bible study, the pastor. So, two questions. Are millions of lost people coming to our church buildings? No. Is it really God's plan for us to just sit in the four walls of our churches and pray for people? No. That's why we are to go and make disciples. We are to go and preach the gospel. We are to go where they are. So how do we fix this problem? What is the biblical solution? No? So if, if the pastor is there and the real priest is there, then we have to turn the church sideways. So that the pastor is there, the royal priest will be there. So we turn the church sideways. Now remember what's the reason why God did give them to the church? He says four. It says God gave gift them to the church for they the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. They are God's gifted men. And they are God's gift to the church. For what purpose? For them to do all the ministry? No, 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 no. For them to equip or prepare the saints, the saints of believers, to do the works of the ministry. But the problem is many pastors have failed to understand. I don't know, faith, or they are just confused, or they are just disobedient. Because instead of, of equipping, training God's people, preparing God's people to do the works of the ministry, they do the works of the ministry alone. So they struggle. They do the Bible studies alone, they do the visitation alone, they do evangelism alone, they disciple alone. So the church is not growing. They are very exhausted, the church is not growing. You are not happy as a pastor, you get burned out. Because that's not God's intention. God's people will also leave your church because they are not satisfied. Something is missing in their Christian life. That is not, not God's design for them. But if you train them, you equip them, imagine you are producing ministers. Now, if there is a church here, 50 members, the pastor is the minister. 50 members. So the pastor is doing everything. On the other hand, there is a church here with one equipper, trainer, and 50 ministers. Because all the members are ministers. That will mean so much, right? That will be a big difference. Because here it's only one, the pastor, who calls himself the minister, is doing ministry. While here, it's the 50 royal priests doing the ministry because the pastor trained and empowered him. So, when you go to the mission field, don't do the ministry alone. That's not God's intention. In fact, I believe, I am convinced that the very first convert you have, the very first disciple that you have, can be part of your team sure. to plan. So, share, disciple, two of you now in the team. Train them. So you go share the gospel, the disciples, then three of you. But he will also do the same. You grow your team. Mm -hmm. The rest of the church will do the same thing. That's right. But many missionaries, many church planters, they do it all. Family come to Christ, praise God, they do Bible studies. Another family. But we can only do much. But if you pray this, if you're a Buddhist family, switching families, fine. Individuals, switching individuals, fine. 
But the point is, every disciple should be making disciples. Every uh, leader should be reproducing leaders. Every church should be planting churches. Or in this case, every small group should be reproducing small groups. Every Bible study group should be reproducing Bible study group. Because if you're the Bible study leader, your Bible study group should not be a Bible study group forever. That eventually can also be a training ground where you train them to be leading Bible studies. Right? Teach you later how to do that. Because the problem is, we always again do it alone. We train to handle it. Now I will teach you this afternoon that the first meeting, I will do it. The second meeting, no, I will never do it. I will ask somebody to do it. The next meeting, another one will do it. So that they will say, it's not that difficult. I only saw it once, but I will learn how to do it, so I will do the same. So everybody will do that. Oh, so that will be the, the norm, that will be the practice, that will be what they see, that's the model that they see. The problem with the model that we, we see is that it's the leader who is leading is that for eternity. <laughs> it's not God's design. So in other words, we should never lack Bible study leaders. Because as a leader, you have to reproduce Bible study leaders. If you're not a real leader, you have to reproduce leaders. So we don't need to have problems with workers. Because you will have more evangelists, you will have more disciple makers, you will have more small group of Bible study leaders because every leader will be reproducing leaders. We need to begin ministry with this mindset, yeah. all believers. My, we are four brothers, all of us are pastors. What my, my, the brother next to me is in Davao. He used to pastor a traditional church, right? traditional churches in the Philippines. But 12 years ago, he decided, no, I will start my own church. Because he said it's too difficult to really, you know, unlearn and, and teach new things. So they just celebrated their 12th year, and now they have 1,600 in the church. And he was telling me, I was there last month. We we began missionary training uh, to to train their people. You know, with all of these concepts, because again, all concepts they you know uh, are are. Maybe it's not being taught already when God is trying to change it, but they see different models that still the traditional. So uh, what I'm sharing with you now, I actually shared with them. We have to, to unlearn all those things and learn, learn the strategies of scriptures. That's why if you look at the scriptures, in just a matter of years, they were able to, the whole Roman Empire, remember? They, they were able to influence. That's why Constantine, to remain on the throne, you know, to get the favor of the Christians, declared the whole Roman Empire as Christian. Of course, that became a problem because Christianity became the state religion. And so even non-Christians now, they don't have the Lord, they don't have a personal experience with the Lord, are now coming to the church. And that's where the problem began. They don't know how to share the gospel. They don't have the experience of eternal life. They don't know the Lord. So they begin pointing on the clergy, the, the priests, the ministers. You do, you do it. You do it. And now the atheists that happen. But let's go back. This is what we're talking about now are principles that have been used in the early church. That's why they have been growing in an amazing way. And we'll try to examine even more of those. So are you, are you following what we're talking about here? Yes. Reason of all believers, okay? Everybody should be involved. Everybody. Share your gospel, make disciples, and then small groups. Those are the three skills that you need to learn. Don't ever go to the mission field if you don't do you don't know how to do those three. You will do you are going to fail. Yeah. But if you are doing that and faithfully do that, you will really see success beyond what you can even think of. Okay? So we, I, I just pray that you are really uh, trying to meet up here because uh, there are, you know, we, we always see a different model outside. And what I have seen here, well, actually, maybe we already know this, but we struggle to doing it because it's not the common thing that is being done. Okay? So, anyway. But pastors are to be equipers. So again, 
make it your goal when you plant churches wherever God brings you every believer who comes to know Christ make sure that they can they will be part of your team train and equip them because that's the very reason why you have been given to the church don't wait to for the church to have several people the very first convert the second the third the fourth and everybody who comes to know Christ through your ministry should be part of your team what is your job train and equip them then and they do the works of the ministry okay so when we do that then we will see the ministry grow and here you can see the map of the Philippines is actually there so that uh, you know, uh, uh, in the Philippine context if you're in the Philippines and you do this then wherever your people are in the country they will be sharing the gospel they will be making disciples they will be they are starting small groups in the marketplace in their workplace they will do that because that's what they see that's the model that they see now so if this is the case what is happening now is that the focus of the ministry shifts from the church to the church members workplace community the school and home before we are in the church this is where we do ministry again that's wrong because the church should be a place for training and equipping where is the ministry it should be outside because evangelism is works of the ministry right making disciples is one of the works of the ministry and the small groups doing those those are ministries doing this things of the works of the ministry it should not be done in the church training and equipping yes we do in the church but it should shift now from the church to the community where they live where they work where they study and even in the homes where not not all yet are believers so those those are where ministries are supposed to take place are you following yeah so at the you know is there are churches they said no this is our ministry center oh, oh you mean training center <laughs> because that's where you train right the church is where you train ministry should be out there because unless there are like events that you bring in unbelievers but in most cases you go where they are so once you do that the good thing is you notice the arrows now they are pointing in different parts of the world because if you do it here you can do it anywhere but if you do it you don't do it here doing overseas what we're doing here at home is easy but doing something there that you've not even done here will be difficult some people are some uh, uh, people are saying Oh, I'm going to Saudi Arabia to work, or I'm going to the Middle East. So I begin sharing the gospel to the Muslims there. They have not even been involved in sharing the gospel here to non-Muslims. You know? <laughs> if, if it's difficult to do that here, it will be more difficult to do it there. <clears throat> but if it's done here, and if you do it regularly here, whether you like it or not, it's just natural. As you convert with people, that open doors, share the gospel. So that's why you have to do it here. Yeah. So one thing exciting is that as we train and equip our people in the Philippines or wherever we are, what country we are from, we are actually preparing workers for the global workers. As I have been involved with the Philippine Mission Association and move around, this is what I saw. Even a small village church, even a small you know, a uh, rural area, tribal church. I have seen some of them now having a global ministry. Why? Because they train and equip their people to share the gospel, make disciples, to handle small groups. And you know the OFW phenomenon, the overseas Filipino workers. Some will work overseas, right? But what happened is, wherever that brings them, they have been doing this thing. So, share the gospel, they make disciples, they start small groups, and then eventually they start ministries. So, even a small church can actually have a global ministry, it's not happening. But everything will, be, will start in the local church context. In your case, as you go to the mission field as missionaries, everything will start day one in the mission field. Lord, 
you know, you pray for the person of peace, right? Have you already talked about person of peace? Not yet, okay, anyway, maybe uh, you will also talk about that, but it's like a, a, that the key person that God is raising uh, to help you connect with the community. But anyway, there will be people like that that God will, will bring to you. So you'll be praying, God, give me the right people, the right connections. Or again, others would call, this, uh, call them personal peace. So, and then as God give, give them, uh, gives them to you, what do you do? You share the gospel. You disciple them. You, you train them. They will be part of your team. So from day one, that should be your prayer. God give you people who, who would come, who, who, who would not just know you, but people that can be part of my team. At day one, that should be your goal. Don't make it your goal after you have already 10 members or 15 or 20 members. Day one. You know, and you will be surprised, your church will grow faster than what you think. Uh, you know, using all these principles, I will share later uh, more statistics, but the Bhutspuri people, uh, one of the people groups in India, they use the, these principles. In a matter of 20 years, they planted 80,000 churches and baptized more than 4 million believers. Why? Because everyone was evangelizing. Everyone was making disciples. Everyone was handling small groups that eventually become churches. 80,000 new churches, 4 million new believers in a matter of 20 years. So it can happen. Because it's happening. It, it already happened and it's happening. In China, one of the province, in Henan province, from 1 to 5 million members in only 8 years. I mean, how can you grow that fast? Again, it's every believer making disciples, every believer sharing the gospel, every believer involved in the works of God. So again, from day one, you have to think of this, and you have to pray about this. This should be what it is when you start ministry. Okay? Are you excited? Yes. yes. I'm actually excited to hear after your training whatever that brings you <laughs> to see how, how God will will use you using these uh, principles in, in the New Testament. Okay. Now let's look at uh, two Old Testament characters, Jeremiah and Daniel. Jeremiah, the dramatic of uh, from God, he was a prophet, a full-time holy man. However, Daniel, uh, they were taken captive in Babylon. Mm -hmm. He was just a layman, he was a government official. The question is, which one was greater and more pleasing to God? <laughs> Jeremiah, the prophet, or Daniel, the layman? Well, it should be both. Yeah. Both men were equally pleasing to God. Why? Because a godly layman is just as pleasing to God as a godly pastor of Jesus' word. But it's important to pleasing God for every day. Yes. Yes. Now we need to understand this. Because the problem is many pastors thought that their work is more important than the work of the people. But it's equally important to God. Our calling is to equip. The God's people is to do the work of the people. So we want to see God in the We want to see everyone in our ministries really become like Daniel. Two testimonies. God is using me to share my faith at my workplace. God is using me to quit my job. The question is which testimony gets the loudest email? Huh? <laughs> the other one said, I will quit my job. I want to be full time in the ministry. That I said, I'm, that is using me to share my faith in my workplace. So both, yeah, both should get the same amen. Why? Because all that, all that is important is knowing and obeying God's will for your lives. Huh? Sharing your faith while working on a secular job like Daniel is just as great as preaching a sermon on Sunday morning like Jeremiah. In fact, what do we need? God has called many more of us to be Daniels than Jeremiah's. There are more. I mean, there are more believers that should be witnesses in the marketplace than preachers, like Jeremiah. Just imagine the all are preachers. <laughs> yeah. 
So, what is important is we need to understand where that there is a high purpose where we need more for study. So, that's why you please at work.